Good morning, gang. What's going on? Hope you're all doing well. So I'm going to go over five trades that I'd like to see happen after the lockout that I think can shake up baseball. Uh, earlier this week, I went over my eight free agent signings that I'd like to see that I think could shake up baseball a little bit. I want to talk about the trades today. Obviously, I'm going to put out a video a little bit later once the details of the meeting between the MLB owners and the Players Union takes place. Uh, I'll give you all the updates on that, and obviously we'll talk about it tonight on the live stream. But I want to give you this one, too, because I, I was supposed to do it earlier this week, and I didn't, so my apologies. So here we go. Um, by the way, if you're first time here, you know, welcome to the channel. Please support it by liking and subscribing. It's really helpful to the channel's growth, and I want to bring this out to a broader community. So I thank you anyway. Um, number one, the Cincinnati Reds uh, send Amir Garrett, super relief pitcher, and Jesse Winker, outfielder, over to the San Diego Padres. Padres need an, uh, another lefty bat. Right, another outfielder, and they need um, another relief pitcher. They have a boatload of starters, but they need more offense and more versatility there. So Winker accomplishes that, and Garrett helps to boost that ridiculous bullpen. Um, return, I don't know. I'm just going to give you the trades that, that self the major players going over. Not exactly sure of the return at this point because we don't know the details of the CBA yet as to whether they can add this, whatever. So I'm going to keep the returns out, but that, that, that's really irrelevant at this point. Most of them is going to be prospects anyway. So that's the first trade. The second trade, uh, Baltimore sending John Means over to the New York New York Mets for prospects. <clears throat> and uh, the first trade, these will all be prospects coming back, or maybe a major leaguer here and there. But John Means over to the New York Mets. I, I think, you know, with the addition of Max Scherzer, obviously, you know, complimenting Jacob DeGrom and Taiwan Walker and some of those other guys, I still think they need another uh, a younger starter. I mean, DeGrom <clears throat> and Scherzer are older. They're super-duper aces. But they've had trouble. I mean, DeGrom particularly has trouble, has had trouble staying healthy. Scherzer ended the season with dead arms, so, but it, he's almost 42. So at this point, I think it would be wise to bring in another starter for the Mets uh, to, you know, to uh, add to that starting rotation one way or another. And keep in mind, this trade to the uh, Padres will probably, you know, light up the uh, light up the Dodgers' uh, willingness to do a move. Uh, the Mets would probably make the Braves, you know, eager to make a move too. So it would affect teams in their in their division. So that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do this. The third trade, the Cleveland Guardians send Jose Ramirez and Shane Bieber over to the LA Dodgers. Counter move to the Padres move. This would be an absolute ridiculous blockbuster. You know, sending Bieber over there to replace Scherzer and most likely Kershaw, who's probably going to be headed elsewhere, I think. Um, and then adding Jose Ramirez to that ridiculous infield. There's no guarantee Trey Turner's going to come back. Okay, I know they have Chris Taylor and some of these other guys. They have Justin Turner, but he's getting older. There's no, I mean, they don't have a mainstay at first base or second. You know, I mean, and Ramirez, you could, you could essentially move Turner, or uh, over to first base or make him the DH, and put Ramirez at third, which would be a massive upgrade over Justin Turner. It gives the Dodgers a lot of versatility, and again, they could lead this. You know, they could send Lux over, I mean, Lux, they could send Dustin May, Bruster, like, they could do a lot. And the Indians would, I mean, the, the Guardians, excuse me, would be wise to uh, entertain a trade like this. The Dodgers have the ability to give them what they need in return. So, that's trade three. That one is a monster. Trade four, uh, Chris Babbitt, who's a starting pitcher, okay, and MJ Melendez, who's a stud young catching prospect, the top 50 prospect in all baseball, the number four prospect all in all um, in the Royal system, and Babbitt being a 24-year-old young dynamic starter from the Kansas City Royals over to the New York Yankees. Yes, the Yankees need catching depth, okay? There's no guarantee, even though Gary Sanchez has hit 23 home runs last year, he still has not a super high upside bat, but he's wildly inconsistent, okay? And we need some pipeline of catching in return. They're doing a great job at you know, filling out a, a shortstop pipeline of prospects, and you know, right behind that center field, we got to keep that up the middle thing going and start boosting the catching pipeline. They brought in some guys on minor league deals. They made some international signings, but Melendez is the guy that represents somebody to me, or, or Luis Camposano from the Padres. That's closest to the major leagues that has the ability to replace Gary Sanchez if he doesn't come back to the Yankees. So um, it also gives them the ability to move Sanchez in a trade potentially to a National League team. Now that they have the DH, or they're adopting DH in 2022. So it gives them options. It gives them flexibility. And Babbitt gives them a young starter to add to the rotation. I don't know who here has heard of Babbitt. Probably not many people, but he's actually, you know, he's an up and coming, growing, and he's a pre ARP kid, too. So they have boatloads of years with him. And that's what they need more young starting pitchers. No guarantee that Tyon's going to be back healthy. Uh, or back after 2022. So there's a lot of things that they need to address. And this is one of them, pitching and catching. Okay. And last, my fifth trade, starting pitcher Pablo Lopez over from the Miami Marlins 
to either the LA Angels or the Seattle Mariners. They both need a front line pitcher. They both have, you know, particularly Seattle has more of a prospect, uh, you know, pipeline to give to the to the Marlins. But Marlins also need offense. What if you package something, you know, with either uh, one of their outfielders, Walsh or, or Joe Adele, sending back over to the Miami Marlins, who has pitching to offer for offense, which they need. This to me lines up uh, with either one of these teams as a smart move. So and bring Pop, bringing Lopez to the West Coast. The Angels, they need more pitching. Noah Syndergaard's not enough, okay? And Seattle needs more pitching. So, and <clears throat> this to me represents a, a good trade for both teams as well. So, I wanted to go over these five trades. You let me know what you think, okay? And again, you know, I would have more details on the return, but we just don't know what's going on right now with the CBA. So, once that's uh, once that's done and agreed upon, I'll be giving more details on stuff like this. So, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. If you Hit the thumbs up, and I'm hoping to see you guys tonight on the live, and be out, be on the lookout for the uh, video, uh, giving you details about the meeting later on. I'll talk to you later.